Hey guys and girls, it is 6.30 in the evening here in southern Oklahoma and it is 100 degrees. That's right, 100 degrees. I'm in the shade, I've got a little bit of breeze blowing, coming off the water, so it's really not all that bad, but it was 104 degrees here in Oklahoma. But listen to me, we have got, tomorrow the high is going to be 92. Now 92 is hot. But the, it's gonna, but the lows this next weekend is going to be down in the 60s. You know what that means? That means we've got to figure out how to transition from the hot late summer to fall fishing. How do you do that? Well, before I tell you, be sure and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss a single Jimmy Houston video. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified every time we do a video because we're doing about three, four videos a week. So be sure and hit that subscribe button. Get on Jimmy Houston Outdoors YouTube channel. Now, these tricks or tips, whatever you want to call them, to catch fish and transitioning from hot summertime fishing to fall fishing, there's three things you want to consider. One is when you're transitioning in the fall, you want to think about the fact that most of the bass are going to end up being suspended. In other words, they're not going to be on top. They're not going to be laying on the bottom. They're going to be somewhere between the top and bottom. They spend a lot of time suspended. And I'll, I'll explain in a few minutes exactly why they do that. But they spend a lot of time suspended. So what you want to do is you want to go after those bass and think about the fact that they're not going to be on top, they're not going to be on the bottom. So what you want to look for is you want to look for areas where you've got covers that bass can be suspended and still be comfortable. One of the easiest things to think about is boat docks. You fish in a lake that's got a lot of boat docks, that's when you want to start fishing your boat docks. In real earnest is in this time when that water temperature starts falling down a little bit, we start having some cooler nights, even though the days still get hot, that transition from late summer to fall fishing. Boat docks are good, uh, bridges are good, bridge pilings are good. If you've got a lake that's got standing timber, standing timber is good. If you've got a lake that's got real deep grass in it, they'll actually suspend over the top of that grass. So think about those kind of kind of things, places to fish. The other thing you want to think about is points. Points are really, really good at this time of the year. And the points you want to look for, you want to look for points that are closest to ledges and drops that are good summertime ledges and drops, points that are closest to those. So you just take your, your topo map or look on your map on your locator and you look where you see points and ledges and things where are good summertime bass fishing spots and try to find the points that's closest to those. Now, here's what will happen a lot of times is those bass will go over there to those points and they will suspend out over on those points. And so if they're suspended on points, generally most of those points don't have much cover. So you got to kind of slip up on them easy. You got to make baits that you can make really long, long throws with because you want to make long throws so suspended bass because if you get very close to them, you're going to, uh, you're going to spook them. The third thing, and this is the most important thing to remember, the third thing you want to remember when you're transitioning from that late summer to fall fishing is shad. Absolutely. You want to follow the shad. Wherever the shad go, you go because that's where the fish are going to go. And one of the things that happens this time of the year because of those shad is you start to have a lot of schooling activity. You want to really pay attention to anything that breaks on top of the water. You see one fish break, there might be 50 bass there. So anything you see on top of the water, you want to watch for those shad, follow those shad. Wherever you see shad, you want to fish. Now, as we get a little bit deeper into the fall, those shad are going to move back into the tail ends of pockets. Some of the times when you start having really cool nights, they'll start doing it pretty early. So you want to be sure and go check in the back end of the pockets. If you see schools of shad back there, there's going to be back, bass back there, absolutely no doubt about it. And so pay attention to that. Now, you got a bonus that time of the year, too in that fact that if you got those shad and you got schooling fish, if you've got a lake that's got white bass in it, you like got a lake that's got stripers or you got hybrids or wipers as they call them in a lot of parts of the country, which is a cross between a white bass and a striper, those fish are going to be schooling also. I was talking to a guy this this past weekend down at the Bus Buckmasters Expo and they're just smoking them on West Point Lake. West Point Lake is a great lake in Georgia and they're catching a lot of hybrids out there now and a lot of them are really, really nice fish. A lot of the lakes around the Dallas area, a lot of the lakes in Kansas, a lot of lakes here in Oklahoma have white bass and or stripers and hybrids and it's a great time to catch those things up on top of the water. So it's kind of a bonus fish. Here's something else though. If you're out there in a tournament and you see hybrids or, or, or white bass or striper schooling on top of the water, fish a bait down below them. 
a lot of times big old bass, because of the fact that they suspend a lot in this time, transitional time of the year, big old bass will be down underneath those schools of fish. And what they're doing is they're picking off injured shad that fall down through the, the cracks. So the white bass are hitting those fish up there and hitting them. And a lot of them, they just hit and they injure and they start falling down below that school. And there'll be big old bass down there. If you'll fish down below those, you'll have an opportunity to catch some really, really big bass. So what kind of a baits do I use to use them? Well. There's a lot of baits you can use, but now here's one of the, here's one of the very best baits to use in the fall, particularly if you're around the shed. This is a uh, this is a lucky strike bait. It's called a Cajun wake. It's a wake bait. It's a topwater bait, but it doesn't pop. Or, and you can use topwater baits work really really good. There's no doubt about it. But this wake bait right here just simply leaves the wake on top of the water, so it looks like an injured shad swimming on top of the water. A really good bait to fish for those suspended fish around boat docks, around uh, bridge piling, suspended trees, uh, where the bass are suspended in standing trees. That's a really good bait right there. That's a color I'd use, chrome. You want to really think about colors that look like shads, color that emulate, emulate shad. Another bait that I like to use, another bait that I like to use is a Hail Mary. Again, here's another bait. Here's another bait that looks just exactly like a shad. It's got a purple top on it. Uh, it's got red eyes in it, so you got two really good colors right there. The belly's a shad color, and this they call it a Hail Mary because you can just throw all the line off your, off your spool. You can make really, really long casts. This is one of those baits that you want to use when they're schooling. You get down below the, the white bass or, white, or stripers that might be on top. This is one of the baits you want to use in that type situation. This is one of the baits you want to use when you're sneaking up on those points where you have points that the bass may be suspended out of maybe over 15, 20, 25, 30 foot of water, but they may only be six or eight feet deep. You can make a really, really long cast. This is a Lucky Strike. It's a bait designed by Ricky Klein and RC Hail Mary. This is a good bait to use in that situation. Now, another bait that I like to use because suspended fish and even in, in really deep water is a crankbait. And this right there, that's, that's a, and that's really probably not a very good color to use this time of the year. That's a, a, an American Original Deep Smoothie. I would probably go with, uh, I'd probably go with something like this. That color right there is called a Marty's Party. That's just a, di a different color. It's more of a shad color. Think about shad white, solid white would be good. Go with shad colored bait. Shad color more than anything else. Now, if you're gonna pick a second choice, I'd pick a bluegill color because you have a lot of bluegills, more bluegills in the lake right now than any time of the year because they spawned all summer. So you got a lot of bluegill, think about that, but the bass are gonna be following those shad. You follow the shad, you're gonna have good success. And last, <laughs> but obviously not least, is a Jimmy Houston Legend spinnerbait. Now, you hear me talk all the time about round blades creating a lot more vibration. This is definitely one of the times of the year when you're gonna go with a willow leaf blade. A willow leaf blade is going to cross a lot of flash. It's going to look just like shad going through the water, putting out a lot of glitter, a lot of flash, and this is when you want to use this. This bait works really good, and when you find those shad that gets in the tail ends of the pocket, probably this is your number one bait to use. You can catch them in the schools. You can catch them around the bridge pilings and the boat docks, but probably it's a better bait to use when those shad get to the tail ends of the pockets, and they will go to the tail ends of big creeks. They'll go to the tail ends of pockets. As the nights get cooler, that's what they're going to do. And even though it's 104 degrees here in Oklahoma today, 100 degrees right now, two nights from now, the low is going to be 62, 62. You know what 62 degree water is going to do? What weather is going to do? Temperature, it's going to start cooling that water off. As that water gets cooler, the shad are going to start moving to the end. Of course, the shad is going to actually eventually have a winter die off, and we'll talk about that as we go a little bit further. Hey, comment on this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Jimmy Houston YouTube channel, we're having a lot of fun out here doing a lot of videos. Be sure to hit that notification bell so you never miss a single video. Transitioning time is right now.